I tried beating the Ancients Awakened mod in Terraria, but every enemy we kill drops absolutely random loot. This means that a slime can drop anything from total garbage to endgame weapons that only the god Dragon Slayer should be able to obtain. Will I be able to defeat Shen, the super ancient doomsayer dragon, or is luck not on my side today? Well, let's find out. I started off my playthrough by checking the boss checklist and realizing that we were doomed from the start. There are so many Many bosses that we're gonna have to get through and this is gonna be beyond interesting for me as this is my first time playing. We killed the slime and it dropped us some vanity which is quite garbage and then I continued over to the left side of the world in order to just explore what this mod even has in store for us. Upon killing a slime I got myself a treasure bag of one of the ancients awakened bosses and I managed to get myself a weapon called the gale of wings but it consumed a lot of mana. I got myself a little halo vanity making me look very similar to Boyina might I ask. So I'm gonna equip this for now, but please no simping in the comments I ventured over to the right side of the world and my first goal was to fight the mushroom monarch Which to craft the summon for we needed 10 mushrooms in the corruption upon killing an eater of souls I managed to get myself the eye of Cthulhu yo-yo and I also got myself a chaos baton Which gave us two very overpowered summons I broke some of the orbs in order to summon in the eater of worlds So we can get a bunch of loot from the get-go my summons actually ended up doing a bulk amount of the work and from the eater of worlds we managed to get ourselves a set of wings a pickaxe the ultimate battler buffs the meteorite strike which was a very overpowered sword for our stage of the game i also got myself the drill containment unit but there was something a little bit better that we were going to get even later i mean we were pretty geared up to fight most of the bosses that we were going to encounter in pre-hard mode so i wasn't really too stressed with my loot and i tried to focus all of my energy on fighting as many bosses as possible a Upon coming back to spawn, I started making myself a elevator using the drill containment unit, and I stumbled upon a massive green underground circle symbol thing. I have no idea what this is, and I'm still puzzled by this enormous structure to this day. I went over to explore this very sinister looking symbol in the middle of our world, but it didn't really lead to anything good, and it didn't help us with progression at all. I did manage to get myself the best set of pants in the game from essentially the get-go, so our armor was also looking quite fine. I decided to come back to spawn and start placing down chests just so we can actually organize all of our loot and not have an absolutely cluttered inventory. I managed to rearrange some of my gear and try out some new weapons. Over on the right side of the world, I managed to stumble upon this inferno biome. Using a sword called the Breaking Dawn, I used it to light my way and then I went down this volcano. I farmed out some resources and materials that I needed here and I also got myself a set of wings that look like they belong to a dragon and I'm pretty sure these are also one of the best wings in the game. Anyways, after this, I had enough mushrooms to actually craft myself the Mushroom Monarch Summon so I summoned him in and defeated him. This was the very first boss, so it was quite easy, but the bosses to come become very, very devastating quite quickly. The next boss we had to fight was the Feudal Fungus, which essentially was the Mushroom Monarch, but it was blue. Before this, I went over to Skeletron's dungeon, fought and defeated Skeletron, crafted myself the summon for the Feudal Fungus, and went to the Mushroom Biome to absolutely demolish this boss. After this, one of the mobs actually ended up dropping an upgraded version of the Drill containment unit which was this cloud that would just plow through everything. I used it to destroy like half of my world and make my way through the jungle to get myself as many life crystals as I could. Upon coming back to spawn we actually got invaded by goblins which gave us the perfect opportunity to grind out a bunch of loot. Using the breaking dawn we absolutely demolished the goblin invasion and they did not stand a single chance against us and after the goblin army was defeated I went back to the mushroom biome to fight another boss called the truffle toad. This was quite easy as well and we took it out without any trouble whatsoever. Upon coming back to spawn, I placed down all of my crafting stations, made sure to organize my inventory, and then while farming for materials in the jungle, I summoned in and killed the queen bee by accident. Yeah, I know, our weapons are so good that I just killed the queen bee by accident, and then I stumbled upon a biome called the Mire. This is where we find special mushrooms in order to craft a special boss summon from the Ancients Awaken mod called the Hydra. Upon coming back to spawn, I went over to the desert and used a desert lamp to summon in the Desert Jinn. This boss summoned in a sandstorm and just threw punches at you, but using the Bane of the Bunny, which was a thrower weapon that I had, I took him out quite quickly, and the next boss I wanted to fight was the Sub-Zero Serpent, which required us to farm out certain materials 
materials in the ice biome. But before this, I ventured into the sky and found another biome called the Void. This consisted of a trans-dimensional fidget spinner and a bunch of sky islands surrounding it, but there was a special boss that we could summon in this area called Sagittarius. So I farmed out all the materials I needed to summon in this boss and then went over to fight it. This was essentially a horse-like creature and we took it out quite quickly and then after this I went down to the underworld and fought the wall of flesh putting us officially in hard mode. As soon as I came back to spawn it was already nighttime so I spawned in and using the Mizu Arashi which was a rapid fire bow we absolutely blasted through the destroyer and then I went to go farm out souls of night as well as souls of light to summon in the rest of the hard mode bosses. During this time I went over to the snow biome in order to summon in and defeat the sub-zero serpent and this was a piece of cake. I mean this was a pre-hard mode boss. The only thing annoying about it is that it was kind of hard to hit if you didn't have any homing weapons and it also kind of glitched out so I could only see its head. One thing I realized is that within our inventory we actually had the best summon weapon in all of Agents Awaken. I did have to go through the entire recipe browser to double check this but yeah this came in super clutch later within the playthrough but I wasn't using it right now because I didn't want to one shot every single boss we came into contact with. I built myself a bunch of NPC houses because we actually needed to talk to a certain NPC in order to progress within the game and then I went over to the dungeon in order to farm out more bones so I can craft myself the summon for Skeletron Prime. I bless my world with all of the hard mode ores so we could actually craft ourselves the summons and then once it turned to nighttime I first summoned in Skeletron Prime, defeated him using that one rapid fire bow I was previously talking about and then did the same thing for the twins. In the bottom left of the screen I got a very chilling prompt. The jungle grows restless but regardless of this growth Anubis wants me to do a favor for him back in town. If you want to do Boyo Boyo a favor I suggest you subscribe to the channel as a random act of kindness. Anyways after this I went over to the jungle, summoned in and absolutely shredded through Plantera with Golem coming very soon after. I actually just picked up his altar and defeated him back at spawn and coincidentally on our first time we managed to get a Pixaw which is one of my favorite pickaxes in the game but unfortunately we had something far better. I also got a weapon called the Time Splitter which was a lance that I ended up using till practically the end of the game after this point as it was very overpowered and the bosses were also very overpowered. After this we got invaded by pirates which gave us the perfect opportunity to grind out a bunch of loot so using the time splitter lance we shredded through the pirate invasion and stored all of the items in the chest. The more randomizer playthroughs I do the smarter I get with these boyos trust me like I am never not going to have chests on hand. After this I went to go talk to Anubis and he gave me raw scepter. This was a summon for a boss that I could use in the desert but I didn't notice that it was in my inventory for quite a while so it took me a bit of time to figure that out. I went over to fight the lunatic cultist and we defeated him very quickly prompting the celestial creatures to invade and I first tackled the stardust pillar. We took it out easily and next I moved over to the nebula pillar but before that I came back to the desert summoned an Anubis and before I could even do anything to it my summon one shotted him. Yeah. This was the power of the most powerful summon in the game. Thank god this thing existed because without it I don't know what I would have done with the later bosses. Anyways I next took out the nebula pillar, took out the solar pillar and finally destroyed the vortex pillar. Moonlord was about to spawn in so I quickly rushed all the way back to spawn and I actually switched to another weapon for this boss fight called the perfect javelin. This was a weapon that was even better than the time splitter and I can't emphasize how quickly we took out Moonlord with our arsenal and especially the summons they did a crazy amount of damage to the moon lord we took out his eyes took out his core but this wasn't the end of our journey there were so many more bosses to come and this was kind of only the beginning of the chaos that soon followed. Right after taking out Moonlord, I decided to fight Enrage Duke Fisheron and we absolutely blasted through him. I never thought those words would ever leave my mouth but yeah, we toyed around with Duke Fisheron and then I went back to the desert to fight the second form of Anubis. We took out his first form quite easily which summoned in Anubis the Forsaken Judge. This was his second form and he was the very first post Moonlord boss that we had to challenge. Of course, since our weapons were pretty good, we made quick work of 
of him, but you could definitely see that this is where the game is gonna start getting a little bit less forgiving. Next boss we had to fight was the second form of Athena. I went over to the Sky Fortress, summoned her in, but before even noticing what happened, I teleported back home, which prompted her to despawn. I came back over to the Sky Fortress, fought her again, we took out her first form quite easily, but as you boyos might guess, this wasn't the end as she had a second form. We took that out as well, there was like a whole storyline behind this, but we officially beat Athena and we could move on to the next boss, which was Worm King Greed. For this, I needed to go farm out a very special set of in their dedicated biome. It kind of looked like an underground poop palace, I'm not even gonna lie, but we got all the materials we needed, I crafted the summon, and I went to go fight Worm King Greed. This boss fight lasted like 2 seconds with the perfect chaos javelin, I didn't even get to see what the boss looked like, but after this we can go over to a very special dedicated portion of the sky and input all 3 of the drops from these bosses. I put each totem in their respective places and I got myself the equinox worm. I used it and summoned in what essentially I could best describe is the devourer of gods from the ancients awakened mod. This was the most chaotic boss fight thus far and it was actually quite a challenge. We first took out the daybringer which is the yellow worms leaving us with the nightcrawler. We dodged all all of his attacks, took him out, and now our next boss is the Sisters of Discord. I did already have the summon for this, so thank god we're not gonna have to go grind anything out. I came back to spawn, summoned them in, and this was the start of a tragic journey. I mean, we died countless times to these bosses, and the fact that there were two of them, there were just so many things to focus on all at once, and I've never really experienced anything like this. But yeah, we died over and over again before I could actually learn the attack patterns, half cheese them with the nurse. We managed to take them out, prompting us with a very unsatisfying death. Well, I guess they didn't die, as you will come to see very soon. But after this, we can move on to fighting the two dragons of each respective biome. First, I went over to that volcanic inferno biome and fought Akuma, which was a fairly easy dragon boss fight. But yo, like we got dragons in Terraria, what, what is going on here? This was super sick, definitely not as hard as the Sisters of Discord, but I had lots of fun fighting it, and I I did manage to find a strategy to cheese this boss, you just kind of run in circles and he does not hit you. And after this, I went over to the mire at night and summoned in Yamata, which was the other dragon. This took me forever to beat, I don't know why, but this boss wasn't taking any damage. But I persisted and spent like the 10 minutes that it took to kill it. And once these two dragons were dead, we could use the Doomsday Tesseract in the transdimensional fidget spinner that we saw in the void previously to summon in a boss called Zero. This this was probably the coolest thing I've seen thus far. The boss fight was very interesting and he had some really nice attacks. It wasn't overly difficult. But it's once we beat this boss, our entire sky essentially turned into a black hole and this looks so cool. I was not ready for this whatsoever. After this, we had to go fight Roger Rabbit. This required us crafting a brand new carrot, so I did that, summoned him in, and Roger Rabbit, Champion of the Innocent, was born. This boss fight took me forever. He didn't deal too much damage, but the fact that he had like 1.2 million health gave you a lot of room for error. I didn't die and I managed to take him out on our our very first try thank god because i would not want to fight this thing over again and now we were ready to take on this super ancient dragon called Shen. As soon as it turned daytime in the inferno biome, I used the chaos sigil, which prompted the summon of the sisters of discord. They merged together and turned into discord. This summoned in a overpowered massive dragon. It changed the entire background and this was absolute chaos. He had 800,000 health, but he was nearly impossible to hit. His attacks were very brutal and he dealt tons of damage. I nearly died countless times but we managed to push through it and after learning his attacks, we took him out and got a prompt to come back once we were stronger. Of course, this is my limit, there's no way I'm ever gonna defeat this dragon on any harder difficulties, physically cannot do it, I am incapable of it, and that was the end of one of the super ancients. Be sure to check out another video like this on screen, consider subscribing to the channel if you're new, drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, this has been Boyo, peace out.